riot police advanced swiftly and forcefully, firing tear gas and rubber bullets. There's people being murdered unjustly and not being held accountable. They love African-American people. They love black people. MAGA loves the black people. Cops are getting paid leave for killing people. That's not right. That's not right by anyone's standards. There is police brutality. Uh, people of color have been targeted by police. So that's a large part of it. And they're government officials. They're put in place by the government. So, you know, that's something that this country has to change. There's things we can do to, you know, hold them more accountable, make those standards higher. He's un-American and he doesn't deserve to be in our country. All white, so all lives matter. When black Americans like Colin Kaepernick choose the peaceful route, conservative America, MAGA America, move the goalposts and create a narrative of depicting the exiled quarterback along with Eric Reed and other black protesters taking a knee on the field as un-American. You see, there's a huge difference between white protest and black protest. Let's explain. <laughs> Kentucky Wildcat basketball fans. A crowd of 15,000 revelers rioted in the streets, setting fires and trashing homes. Thousands of fans filled downtown Lexington near the Kentucky University campus to celebrate the win. But things turned nasty. Violence broke out, furniture was torched, and cars were overturned in the streets. Take a look at this scene, a cop in front of an overturned car smiling and chatting with celebratory fans. But Colin Kaepernick protesting black people dying? For the land. Not gonna fly in America. At Pennsylvania State University. Coach Joe Paterno fired, the university president fired. Do you recall why these predominantly white protesters rioted? It was because of Joe Paterno's cover-up to keep his good friend Jerry Sandusky employed and to not ruin the culture of winning football games. End of an era at Penn State and mixed emotions and yes, many unhappy people about it, taking to the streets, fighting with police overnight. However, I have experienced this. People close to me have experienced this. This is vilified. In Tennessee, head coach Lane Kiffin left the Volunteers football program for the University of Southern California. Guess what happened? That's right, they rioted. They burned mattresses, they shouted obscenities, defaced properties, and caused damage. So much so that a longtime equipment manager walked around with a fire extinguisher putting out countless mattresses. How about at James Madison University in 2010? The school's annual Spring Fest block party was shut down, told by police they had to leave, so they rioted. They say some in the crowd threw bottles and rocks at officers, and that forced them to do what you see here, those clouds of tear gas uh, that the officers resorted to to get the crowd to disperse. Yep, they rioted over their party being shut down. In 1979, Chicago. A Chicago shock jock was bitter about the past decades changing musical landscape, featuring him blowing up disco LPs. So what did they do? They turned a doubleheader at Comiskey Park into the Disco Demolition Night as a ticket sales promotion. For 99 cents, fans would get a ticket and bring a record to blow up between games. Disco sucks! Disco sucks! One, two, three, boom! Yeah! As White Sox pitcher Ken Kravick went to the mound to warm up for the second game, a few fans abandoned their seats and headed for the field. It was the worst promotion in the history of the world. Not even Harry Carey, then the White Sox announcer, could control the frenzied crowd. Riots on a baseball field was allowed, but standing up for inequality? For white America? That's just too much to ask. If you'd like to hear more thought-provoking content like TYT Sports on Facebook and to help in my journey to keep media independent, go to tyt.com rick.